Hello Booktube, I'm Scott. I'm Nell. Uh, and we are Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Uh, and we forgot our Bonfire Night Day. No, we missed it. We missed it. We just didn't think. You know, remember, remember, just... we forgot. <laughs> Maybe next year. Maybe next year. <laughs> um, it just came so quickly. We thought about it in, like, September and then we just... It was here. We're not organised people. If you don't know this by now, then you're not paying attention. Yeah, yeah. We maybe will celebrate it in March. Um, now, Courtney has created a brand new tag, and she's tagged us in it. Tag! And you're it. not only did she tag us in it, but we were inspirations for it. <sighs> Inspirational. That's great. I like that. Um, if you haven't checked out Courtney's channel, uh, I will put a link in the description. Check her it. out. She is awesome. She has made me laugh several times and she's so, so smart. Yeah. 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 She's a smart cookie. She wouldn't be no chocolate chip. She would be like a Monte Carlo. You don't like that joke. It's just terrible. It's not even worth a groan. It's not even worth it. Would she be an answer? Would she? Yeah. Would you put up with this kind of nonsense? <laughs> I divorced him because of his bad cookie jokes. All right. Uh, it's the self-aware reading tag. Yeah, okay. Right. We are completely unprepared for this. We did not even go through the Doing questions Doing it off the before. top of our noggin. Um... Which was not the smartest idea. Let's just, come on. Let's do it. Sorry, I'm padding. Um, what, you do not need to pad. Don't I? <laughs> um, we'll do it by ourselves in a minute. You're padding now. What most draws you into a novel or story and makes you want to keep reading? Plot, characters, writing style, atmosphere, or something else? I think the true answer of this is all of the above, depending on my mood. But I think most commonly writing style makes the real difference for me. Um, definitely my favourite books I can quote lines to you from. It's about beautiful language saying things that make me feel things. It's about, I want to say themes for me, like... Um, uh, I like books that uh, talk about money. I like books that talk about things like feminism and homophobia. And I, I basically, I like anybody disadvantaged fighting for their... You like books that reflect your own values back at you. I mean, sure, but I just... I mean, that makes it sound simple, but like... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it's, it's a theme, theme for me. I, I do like writing style as well. I do like it when, but I do like when there is just this lovely worded quote that says something that is just so profoundly true um, that, you know, you can just save that up and then when you're at Christmas party and your racist uncle says something to you, you can just spill out a George Eliot at him or uh, an Emily Bronte and knock him for four. Cricket reference. Oh, it was a cricket reference, was it? And it should have been hit for six, shouldn't it? Just stop. Stop. Sport. Stop it. Oh, I didn't even realise it, okay? What's next? Jeez. Could have let that go through the keeper, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, question two. <laughs> You're actually killing me. That was terrible. That was so bad. It the was essence funny. of myself is like bleeding on the floor. Really? Because of how much you killing me. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think of another cricket reference then. To, you know, anyway. Um, what is a, a convention or trope that will immediately turn you off in your reading experience with a novel or story? 
Sporting metaphors. Sporting metaphors. <laughs> you like a sporting novel. No, I like sporting movies. It's completely different. It's a weird subgenre of like inspirational but somehow not religious movies. It's I don't know. All right. <laughs> it's weird. The I thing it. that turns me off the quickest. Yeah. Is misogyny without a clear purpose. Um, and the example I will give is my least favourite book ever, Jack Kerouac's On the Road. Yeah, okay. Um, or... I really hate a book that the entire purpose is to break a literary rule or change a convent. Like, that's the whole reason they wrote it. And that's all there is. That really bothers me. That's an exercise, not a novel. Yeah, and I don't like it when I feel like that's all they're doing. Now, are you going to name names? Are you going to say Virginia Woolf? That is definitely number one on my hit list for that particular thing that I hate. Uh, and I'm sure that you will all argue with me and tell me that she's rich and complicated and stuff, but I just, it all, it all feels like a writing exercise to me. Are you snobbing Virginia Woolf? I've read a significant amount of Virginia Woolf. I went through a stage where I could not (laughs) walk past a Virginia Woolf book without buying it. I had... So many of them, and I read them all, and I never liked any of them, and I don't know why I kept buying them. Yeah. It was a form of self-torture. Is Virginia Woolf, like, writing for children, is it? Like... What do you mean? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to lead you into saying so. Virginia Woolf was, like, super snobby and, like, intellectually elite, and I was trying to get you to call her stupid. (laughs) Um, if you want to call Virginia Woolf stupid, that's fine. I've not read enough Virginia Woolf to bag her. I've read one book and it was... He tries to make me say sensationalist things so that he can... Yeah, then I can put it at the snippet at the front like, Virginia Woolf is an idiot. Done. Scott Baird is an idiot. Jeez, calm down. Calm down. Fool is a much better word. Uh, what question was that? Two? Jeez, jeez. You're right, we didn't need to pat it. Um, what most appeals to you when reading non-fiction and makes you want to keep reading? I mean, it's easy. Teach me something new. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I really think that's what it comes down to. Um, a lot of the non-fiction I read is memoir, so if you're not a new perspective, I probably will lose interest. Um, but I choose my memoir quite carefully and... It's usually a new perspective, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Number four. Wait. That was number four. Oh, wait. No, what appeals to you most? No, no, sorry. What is a convention or trope in non-fiction that will turn you off your reading experience? That's easy. Say something that isn't, like scientific or factual just like present yeah, like, opinions as fact and be ridiculous yeah that's annoying also like extreme bias just yes any books about diets <laughs> i dns dnf and a book about um acid and about how that... As in LSD. And about, yeah, as a, a LSD. I, my brain just wasn't saying the thing. Yeah. Anyway, the narrator claimed that the planetary position may have had an effect on his trip. And that was it. As yeah. soon as that was, I'm like, nope. No. Nope. No. That was it. Like, instant. That one line gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, number five... Were you done on that one? Mm-hmm. Yep. Would you say you read more for pleasure and enjoyment or more to learn and exercise your brain? Yes. Yeah, both. What's the difference? I enjoy exercising my brain. Yeah. So, yes. 
Um, I do... I do definitely do some reading that is not about brain exercise and, and is just about escapism. Um, but the bulk of my reading is both. I really like having my brain exercised, but if I didn't enjoy a story and I didn't enjoy the plot and all of that, I could just read an essay. You know, it would be much quicker to read an essay that produced the arguments than it would be to read a novel. I get what you're saying. Why? You, you disagree with what I just said. Yeah. You're not going to argue with me. You're just going to say you're an idiot. Move no, on. It's not my... No. Plot is not the only additional factor that fiction writing brings versus an essay. I wasn't uh, saying just plot, but the whole story, the the you know the characters yeah, and the atmosphere I, and the writing and stuff. I get what you're saying, but I feel like a fiction writer has many more tools at their disposal to make an argument than an essayist does, and that that's a weird comparison that you made. Anyway. <laughs> I digress. I digress. So our answer is both. Yeah. Uh, which type of books are you likely to rate more highly and enjoy more overall? Brain candy, pleasure slash enjoyment books, or brain protein, learning slash exercise books? I think they're all both. I don't rate books because it's stupid. Um, the books that stay with me deep in my soul expand my perspective somehow, whether that is intellectually or compassionately or however they do. There is something about myself that they show me or the world that they show me, and I guess that's protein. Yeah, I, I wanted to say protein, but actually... Actually, I think I like my protein dipped in sugar and it's going to be much more candy. I like to be able to say that it could have been protein, but actually it was candy. Do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes I'm meeting a perspective that I know about because I've read it in a similar book, for example. But the, this book is just, it's, it's more satisfying or whatever. Because it's got candy on it. Because it's got candy on it. And that's that's what I want. I, I, I want to be able to say that it's got protein in the middle, but, like, it's actually... Yeah, okay. It's, a, it's, it's sugar-coated. Um, do you have a sense early on on whether or not the book you're reading will be a five-star read or or you will, or a book you will really like? Uh, has a book ever surprised you in this regard? Uh, yeah, totally. I've been surprised by books. Books surprise end. me all the time. Um, not just at the end. Sometimes halfway through, sometimes 100 pages in, I think that... The best books, the whole thing is a journey and you don't just get what you're expecting and that is going to give you some kind of surprise, whether it impacts your entire perception or not. I think for me probably the best example of this is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. When I, I picked it up without knowing anything except that the person who recommended it to me um, and I, I uh, accept music recommendations from this person quite a lot. So this is the best book he ever recommended me, which is very strange. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and I just accepted it because I read and also because there was sort of an affinity with shared music taste, which I think is... Uh, I don't know whether there's a crossover in tastes. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know what? The, uh, this actually, this this interests me quite a lot, music taste versus book taste. So if you're watching, in the comments, 
favorite three bands, artists, music people, right? I just want to see if I uh, like your book taste and your music taste. Like, if Have I some like kind of if I like your book taste, do I like your music taste? Or not like yeah, or is there some kind of shared quality? Anyway, yeah, that doesn't be, matter. Even if you just want to say like I like whatever, like what whatever genre you like or whatever, yeah. just give me an idea. Um, so I went in blind, and when you first pick it up, it's quite heavy on like sort of philosophical meanderings. Um. But that is not what the book ends up being, and it's still one of my favourites, purely because it was just so unexpected, and all of the thinkings, and every time I pick it up, there's more thinkings. It's a real hardcore brain book for me. I think that's one of the things about a really good book, is is when you go back to it, you learn new things. Yeah. Um Yeah. I reckon I'll reread that one a billion times before I die, and every time it'll be a new kind of good. So what a lot of people do, I see it in raps all the time, is they grab a book and they say, from here to here, it was five stars, and then this thing happened, and this this middle bit, that was that was two stars, and then the ending of oh, the ending was five stars. So I brought like over four stars. I don't do that. I'm like... At this point, I said it couldn't be a one star. At this point, I said it couldn't be a two star. You know, I'm, I'm like, it's slowly just cutting the stars off until it... Until it's only got one option. Until it's only got one option. Often, though, at the end, I'm like, which one is it? Is it a four or a five? Is it a three or a four? But... Rating is a weird process. It is a weird process, actually. It's... I don't understand why you all do it. But, um, I... Oh, do you understand the books that leave a mark on you? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's just a way of saying how much you enjoyed the book, really, for me. Yeah, I definitely have, like, a I would recommend or I wouldn't recommend, but most of my recommendations are actually with a caveat, like, I would recommend this to this kind of person in this kind of circumstance, not necessarily a blanket. Although sometimes... Everybody should read it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say a book that like really changed my mind in a weird way was A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Mm. That book is the most horrible wording, long-winded rubbish, metaphors Dickens. in metaphors in, yeah, it's just, it's Dickens on some sort of, it's just, it's Dickens trying to be Dickens. That's what it is. It's Dickens boiled for a while, so it becomes concentrated, concentrated Dickens. Dickens. Yeah, that's it. And then, and then, the end of that book, the last. This the book is made up of three books, right? Books one and two, just just concentrated rubbish. Yeah. Book three, my god, that is awesome. That is amazing. Just to note, I do imagine that Concentrated Dickens is the colour of overboiled cabbage. Like that washed out <laughs> grey green colour. Just just <laughs> concentrated. <laughs> you gave it a colour. <laughs> what's what's concentrated atwood? I don't know. I don't have an image for that in my brain. Is it like sparkly purple or it's something? Probably something that your LSD book could explain for me. Oh, it's a colour that I don't know of yet. Yeah. It's well, a colour I can only smell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's next? Oh, uh, what's next? All right. Um, considering books that you've rated five stars in the past, or if you don't rate them, then books you really love... Do you think you would feel the same way about them now? Why or why not? Oh, I think this is really interesting because I think that you bring yourself to every reading of every book that you do. So books that I read when I was like, I read some pretty hardcore books when I was like nine because I was that kind of kid. Um, I'm not going to have the same experience now in my 30s. Like just... Yeah, I think books like, reflect legitimately, the time in your life that you're reading them. 
Yeah, and like equally, books that I read before I met you would be a different reading for me, you know, like. Yeah. Well, last month I read my one of my all-time favourite, probably my second favourite book ever, Middlemarch, right? Mm. And I still love that book. It is still one of the best books I ever read. But all-time second favourite? Not so much anymore. Not, not so. I mean... Also, you read a book that you absolutely slated the first time you read it. Yes, yes. I had Wuthering Heights I, that was an absolutely terrible book the first time I read it. It was magnificent the second time I read yeah. it. I've got to say, I don't tend to reread things that I slated the first time around. Like, if I didn't like it, it's probably not going to get another go. I had a hunch I was wrong with Wuthering Heights. Yeah, I had a hunch you were wrong too. <laughs> Um, just wrong. But but this is about five star reads. I think I think it's hardly likely to go from a five to a one. Do you know what I mean? Like it's hardly likely to be. A... No, I totally can I totally think that there are books that I rated. I think that if I went, Cloud Street is one of my all time favorite books. It resonates with me because the first time I read it, um, it's about um, two families living together in one house. And the first time I read it, I was living in a house that was two families that were living together in one house um and in cloud street they're running a business and we were running a business and it was just it would there were parallels that were um you owned a talking pig <laughs> we had an odd child <laughs> you know like which, which one <laughs> they're all odd um, um but you know, like, there, there really were, and, like, the comedy really, like, had me in stitches because it, I really related to that book. If I reread it now, I still have that that first connection, that first experience. But if I had amnesia and couldn't remember reading it the first time, I don't reckon I'd like it as much now. But if you had amnesia but you could still remember that experience of living together surely i think something of that but i don't i don't now 20 years later value that experience of living in that house as much as i did at the time when i was living in that yeah. house because of life and how things and relationships change um and so i don't think i look back on it as fondly as in the moment i suppose uh, I suppose, like, when I was very young, I was really into, like, conspiracies, like, aliens are living among us. And, I, and I'm talking, like, yeah. 11, 12, I'm talking end of primary school, right? Yeah. And I read some books there that I would not touch with a 10-foot pole now because they're pseudoscience rubbish. Yeah. And I would have loved them when I was 12. Yeah. And I would just... Like, uh, I refuse. Look down on it now. I refuse to reread the Emily of New Moon series because I loved it when I read it, but <laughs> I know that I wouldn't now. I know that it would be sad. I think it's quite interesting. Booktube has a lot of people who read middle grade, and a lot of like a lot of people who read middle grade who read some like real tough literary fiction and really brainy, intelligent people. <laughs> I I think it's an the desire for a simple story as like a palate cleanser between some of the harder books you read is like so normal. Yeah, it's but I think like but they love it and and being able to put yourself into the shoes of who it is aimed at is is such a good skill that some people have to be able to enjoy I, a book. I don't think that's the thing that makes it different. I think it's the chagrin I have at my old personality that liked that book. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, so you like it's the embarrassment about my early teen self being the person that she was, which is way more narcissistic than anyone has a right to be. Wait, you were more narcissistic <laughs> when you were a kid. Shut up. Um. um, you know, like I, I, I think it's it's about like when you, have you ever gone back and read your old diaries? Oh, cringe. Yeah, I, I never kept diaries and I'm glad of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, icky, cringe. And and for me, sometimes re revisiting fiction, like, that's the same experience. 
Icky. Icky? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it depends how long ago then, because, like, if I'm talking about a book that I read in my, you know, early 30s, then I'm not, I haven't changed all that much in my opinions and my outlooks. I also think that you're, you and I have a very different reading history. Like, you read when you were a kid and at school and then again, like, after we were married. Yeah. Whereas I had sort of my teens and my 20s and then I had about a 10-year break at the start of our relationship. <laughs> Not quite, but it does almost correlate with me meeting you. started a bit before you and... But I actually read more before we got together and then a few years, like, yeah. of, like it all restarted again. But but yeah, there was I, I feel like I had much more reading in my early 20s than you did. Definitely, definitely. And that change in personality between when you're 20 and 20, when you're 30 is huge. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think a lot of people say that your brain stops growing when you're 25, but I, I think that by the time you're about... Like at 25, if it stops growing when you're 25, it takes you a few years to figure all your things out. So yeah, I think like barring any kind of like extreme experience, by the time you're 30, you're sort of who you are. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then you just start sort of like uh, losing functionality in your body. Um, uh, and gaining cynicism. Yeah, yeah. Um, just being generally tired and... Uh, wanting to hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's what aging is. Also having your hair grow out of uh places that it shouldn't grow, like your ear. I think that's a boy thing. Is it? Yeah. Oh good, because I imagine waxing your ears would be horrible. That's not something I'm keen to do. <laughs> what's next? Uh what's next? Tag people. <gasps> who can we tag? Well who is a self-aware reader. I mean, all of them. <laughs> you would hope so. I have a whole bunch of people I could tag. Do you want me to do all four Yeah, of just the tags? do it. Go. All right. Rapid fire. Bam. I would like to tag Sean the Book Maniac. I would like to tag Danny at Spinelli Speaks. I would like to tag... Or oh, I had other people in my head. <laughs> yeah. I would take to tag Kieran from KD Books. Yeah. And I would like... To tag... Sam from Paper Not Books. Oh, good one. Good one. Why do we always tag four people? It just says tag people. Because uh, you like four. I do like Because in your head it's two for you and two for me, but it, that's not actually how we do it. It doesn't matter. That's the end of the story. Thank you for listening to us crap on. Uh, tell us what you think in the comments. Do the tag if you want to. Uh, if you're new here, maybe subscribe because we're stinking awesome. Uh, and if you're not, thanks for your support. Check out all those people we tagged. Also, make sure you check out Courtney's channel. She's awesome. Riot. Riot? She's a riot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah, that was actually just an instruction. Riot. <laughs> riot. <laughs> riot. Um, pikes. I want you to put a head on it. <laughs> Go. Go set fire to shops. All right, this madness must end. Go watch another video. Bye. Bye.